Hello, today we will be going over how to make a dynamic dialogue system inside of Unreal Engine, and I'll be using Replica Studio to actually voice the characters. Are you look friendly? I am happy. Get away from me. Replica Studios are creating a library of voice AI that can be used in films, games, and entertainment. They describe the app as a digital voice studios, and as you'll see later on in this video, it is really simple to set up with Unreal Engine thanks to the plugin that they have. So the first thing you'll do is head over to the third person BP folder and go to the blueprints folder. And then you want to select the third person character and press Ctrl C and then Ctrl V. So we're going to be making another dummy character that our character will be able to have this dialogue with. So I'm just going to right click on this and click rename and I'll just call this my dialogue character. Then you want to right click and look for blueprints and select blueprint interface. We're going to be using this interface to interact with our dialogue character. So you just want to name this something like dialogue interface. And then you want to double click inside here and open it up. And here you'll see it says functions. You just want to call this event dialogue occurs and just click compile to save this. And then we want to close this and head over to our dialogue character and go to the class settings and under interfaces, we want to add the interface we just created. So I called this dialogue interface and we'll just select this and then we'll click compile and we can just go to the components tab and delete the camera boom and the follow camera as we don't need this then we want to head over to the viewport and go to add component and look for render text render and just drag this a bit up so it's above our character's head and then I'm going to make this text say press E to interact as later we're going to make it so that when we press the E key and we're next to this character we will start our dialogue with them. Then with the text render selected if we head over to the details panel we're going to look for hidden in game as we don't want this to show by default we only want this to show if our player is within range. So to set that up we're going to go to add component and look for box collision and I'm just going to drag this down and make it where its feet are. And I'm just going to change the size of this box so it's a bit wider and I'm going to get a bit smaller in the Z. And then we want to scroll down and go to on component begin overlap. We just want to select this box again, scroll down and go to on component end overlap. So on component begin overlap, we're going to cast to our third person character. This may be different depending on what your character is called. But our default character is called the third person character, so that's what we'll be casting to. And if our third person character is in this box, then we're going to drag in our text renderer and look for set, hidden in game, and we're just going to leave this unchecked so that we can see the text renderer. And we're going to do the opposite if the player leaves the box. So I'm just going to select all of this with Ctrl C and then paste with Ctrl V and just connect this into here. Although this time we will hide the text rend renderer when our player leaves the box. Then we want to right click and look for event dialog occurs. So we're referencing the interact interface that we made earlier. And we'll just drag up here and look for print string and just call this testing. So that we can test that this works. And then you want to click compile and we will drag our dialogue character into the world. So next we're going to head over to our third person character and make it so that we can interact with our dialogue character. So I'm just going to open them up and I'm going to make sure I'm in the event graph. Then I'm going to right click and look for the E key. And when I press the E key, we're going to drag off here and look for for each loop with break. And off the array, you just want to drag up here and look for get overlapping actors. So this will look for any overlapping actor within the third person character's radius. And then we're going to drag off the array element and look for does implement interface and look for the dialogue interface. So what we're going to be doing is checking if there's any actor within the third person character's capsule radius, which has the dialogue interface. And if this is true, so I'm just going to drag off here and look for branch and connect loop body into here. And if this is true, my character is within the range of something with the dialogue interface, 
then we are going to call the event dialog occurs within this overlapped actor. So I'll just plug this into here. And then we want to plug this into the break. And I'm just gonna double click to make this a bit tidier to see. And now if I click compile, close this and click play. So if I go up to them and I press E, it prints rings hello, which shows that this system works. So next we're gonna make it so that we can customize the text, which is shown when the player presses the E to interact with this character. So next we're gonna make the UI, which will appear when we interact with our character. So to do that, we wanna right click and look for user interface and select widget blueprint. And I'll call this dialog UI. And then we wanna double click and head inside here. And then if we go to the palette, we wanna look for an image and just drag this into the canvas and make it around a similar dimension to this and just anchor it to the bottom of the screen. And then for the color and opacity of this, you just wanna make this black. And then if we head back to the palette, we wanna look for text and just drag this in here and expand the box so it's like this. And go to anchors and select this one. And then if we go to the details with the text selected, we want to make, we want to look for wrap, it find it, auto wrap text. So what this will do, if I just um, select my text and write some words like this, and I move the box, we can see the box will um, adapt to make sure that it fits all the words. If auto wrap text wasn't on, it wouldn't do this. So that's why we just have that option selected. Once we have done all this, we want to select the text and then go to bind and look for create. Once you're here, you want to head over to the variables tab and click add new variable. And you just want to call this text. And then we want to head over to the variable type and look for text. And then we want to go here and change this to be an array and then click compile. The reason we're making this an array is so that it can store multiple elements. So we're going to have multiple lines of text that our character can say. And you want to make sure that you've added at least one array. Next, you want to drag this in and drag off here and look for get a copy. So depending on the value of this number will depend what line of text it will say. So we're going to make a system to control what line of text it will say. So to do that, we want to add a new variable and we just want to call this text row. And then we want to head to the variable type and change this to be an integer and change this to be a single variable. Then we want to drag this in and then right click and look for select and plug this into option zero and plug this into here. And then we want to connect this into here. Then we want to drag off here and look for equals and make this value minus one and plug this into here. And then we want to select the text row, compile, scroll down and make this minus one. So with arrays, they start at the number zero. So when we make our dialogue system and interact with our character, we're going to be increasing this by one. So we're going to make this start at a value of minus one so that when we interact with our character that we will increase this value by one and then it will read the first line of text which will be on line zero. So that's why we've just made this little system here. Now that we've done this, we wanna click compile, head over to the designer, and we wanna make sure that we select our image and make sure that this is variable box is checked. And we wanna select our text and make sure that this is variable box is checked for them. Then I'm just gonna select both of these guys and go to the details panel and look for visibility. And you just wanna make sure that they are both hidden as we don't want these to show by default. Then we want to click compile and now we can attach this to our dialogue character. So I'm going to go here back to the event where we made it. So if the player steps in this box that he can see the text renderer. And when this happens, we want to drag off here and look for create widget. And we're going to create the dialogue widget UI that we just made. And we just want to right click and promote this to a variable and just call this dialogue. UI and then we're going to drag up here and look for add to viewport 
Then when our player leaves this box, we're going to remove this from the viewport. So we can do that by dragging in our dialog UI. And then we're going to check to see if this is valid. So this will check to see if our dialog UI is currently on the screen. And if it is, then we're going to drag up here and look from remove from parent, which will remove the dialog UI from the screen. Next, we're going to make it so that when we go up to our character and we interact, it will read the lines of dialogue that our character has. So I'm just going to delete this and drag off here and look for do once as we're going to be making it so it reads the character's lines one at a time. Then we want to right click and look for add custom event and call this reset dialogue. So we'll use this later to reset our character's dialogue. Now that we've set this up, we can drag in the dialogue UI variable and drag off here and look for set text. And then we want to right click and promote this to a variable and call this our NPC text. And I'll just compile this. So if I just add some elements here, using these lines, we're going to control what our character says. And you just want to change this to be an I variable so that we can edit this in the world. I'm then going to just connect this into here. And then we want to drag in our dialog UI again. And then you want to drag this and look for text get text and then drag off here and look for image and we're going to make it so that we can see these boxes now so I'll drag off here and look for set visibility and make sure this is set to visible and I'll just connect this into here for this next part it's going to be a bit hard for me to explain it as I go along so I'm going to make this system and then I'll explain what it does after so after here we're going to drag off here and look for a branch and then we're going to drag in our NPC text and look for the length and then we're going to drag up here and look for minus integer and minus it by one then we're going to drag in our dialog ui drag up here and get the text row and we're going to add integer and plus this by one and we're going to check to see if this value is greater than this value and then connect this into here so what this system is going to do is we're going to check to see how many lines of text that my NPC has. And we're going to check to see what row we are currently on. And if this value is greater than this, this means that our character has no more lines for them to say. And if this condition is true, then we're going to drag in our dialog UI and remove it from the parent as we don't need to see the UI anymore. And then we're going to call this reset event. So we'll just drag up here and look for reset dialogue. However, if this event is not true and we still have more lines to read from our NPC, then we are going to drag in our get dialogue UI, look for set text row, and we're going to set our text row to be this value, and we'll plug this into here. And then we're going to call our reset dialogue event, and then click compile. Then we just want to head here and just click this button and make sure this eye is checked so that we can dynamically decide what we want our NPC to say in the world. So I'm just going to scroll down, select my NPC and go to NPC text. I'm going to add two lines. I'll make this first line say hi and then his second line will say I am a person. And then if I click save and play, go up to this NPC, press E. He first says hi, I press E again, it says the second line, I am a person. Next we're going to be making it so that the AI actually voices the lines that it's saying. And we're going to be doing this using some software called Replica. Replica are today's video sponsor, and they're making a library of AI voices that can be used in films and entertainment. So we're going to be using this software to voice our AI. To get started, you want to head over to the Unreal Engine Marketplace and look for Replica. And you want to select this Replica Studios AI voice actor and install this plugin into Unreal Engine. Then you want to head over to the replicastudios.com, sign up and download the software. The team at Replica Studios have provided an exclusive bonus for viewers of this channel. For any new members that sign up, you will get an additional one hour of total credits with the following code USGO60. Just to let you know, credit is what is used to make the AI say speech in Replica. Each time you make the AI generate speech, it deducts the amount of credit you have. Once you've done those steps, head back over to your Unreal Engine project and go to settings and you can go to plugins. And then you want to look for the Replica Studios link and just click enabled. 
and restart your project. Once that happens, it should just reopen your project. Then we want to close this. So then if we head over to the Replica software and we can go to the sandbox and we can enter some dialogue and make our AI say some stuff. If you want to hear how all the voices sound, you can go to the voice library and there are many different voices on characters which you can try out and test. But for now, I'm going to go to the sandbox and I'm going to make my character say, hi, you look friendly. And for the voice, I'm going to select the voice and I'm going to go with gray and we can play it. Hi, you look friendly. And if you want, they also have a bunch of different settings, so you can change the style of how the character says the voice or the pitch. But for now, I'm just going to leave this. And once I have my voice and the line that I want to say, just save the take. And then we can instantly export this into Unreal Engine if you have that plugin, which we just installed. And just click Export, and it should select your project. So I'm going to click Export and export this line. And I'm also going to generate another line. I'm just going to say, I am happy. I am happy. And I'll just save that take and download and export this to my Unreal Engine project. So I'm back in Unreal Engine and Replica has exported the voice lines into Unreal Engine and I've just renamed them line one and line two. So once you have the lines for your character, just select the dialog character and then go to edit dialog character. And then we want to create a new variable and just call this sound. Sorry, call this NPC sound. And we want to go to variable type and look for sound wave and select object reference. And then we want to click compile. And we want to change this to be an array so that we can have multiple of them. And then we want to click compile. Then we want to drag in our NPC sound. I drag up here and look for get a copy. And we'll drag up here and look for play sound 2D and connect this into here and this into here. And then we want to drag in our dialog UI and drag up here and look for get text row. And we want to drag up here and look for plus integer and plus one and connect this into here. And then we want to change this to be the eye icon so that we can edit this in the world. And then we want to click compile. And then I'll close this. And then I'm going to add two elements to my NPC sound. And I'll make this a line one. And I'll make this a line two. And I'll just change the text so it says what he says in the lines. So I've just changed it so that in the text it says what he says in the lines. And now if I click play, and I go up to him and I press E. Are you look friendly? He says the line. I press E again. I am happy. He says the line. And that's how to set up a dialogue system inside of Unreal Engine with Replica. That's all for today's video. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.